Hello, in this segment, I'm going to discuss Newton's method for approximating zeros. Uh, the purpose of this is to uh, take a function that you don't know anything about and find that zero, that zeros through an iterative process. Um, one uh, big field uh, that you'll be introduced to in calculus is numerical approximation techniques um, for problems that are either really difficult to solve or ones that are not solvable. Um, there's uh, kind of two camps in math. One is the like theoretical, uh, do the problem for real, find the exact answer. That's one camp. Then there's the numerical approximation camp where you are um, trying to find a solution that's pretty darn close and good enough, even if it's not an exact answer. Um, so we're kind of in that camp today where uh, we're trying to approximate these zeros. Uh, I want to first write down a formula and show you how it's used, and then we'll spend some time um, deriving that formula and seeing where it came from. Uh, but for starters, um, we're going to, I'm just going to write this down, x to the n plus 1 equals x to the n minus f of x to the n over f prime of x to the n. So this is just a formula. Uh, like I said, for now, I'm just going to write it down. We'll derive it here in a minute. Let me talk about how you use it. Um, so this takes iterations. That means that you um, basically start with uh, a guess of what the zero is, and then you go through the formula. It gives you a second, a better guess. And then you take that guess uh, put it into your formula, it spits out a, another guess. And through these iterations, uh, you get better and better approximations of your zero until you get to um, an approximation that's good enough for your purposes. And that depends on the application. You know, maybe a two decimal digits is adequate for your approximation. Maybe you need five, maybe you need 13, you know. Um, you're never going to get an exact answer, but you can always do as many iterations as it takes to get an answer that's sufficient for your needs as far as the precision. Uh, let me write down an equation, and we'll just start start with it. Um, x uh, cubed plus 3x plus 1. That would be my f of x. And I want to know, when does that equal 0? What are the zeros? Um, so you can see that we have uh, f of x, f prime of x. Let me just write down f prime of x. 3x squared plus 3. Um, so at this point, if I want to know what the zeros are, I have no idea, first of all. I know because it's an odd power, there must at least be one, maybe three. But at least there's going to be one. So we're just going to guess. I'm going to call this x sub 1 and... How about eight? Um, so we're going to use that to get x sub two. x sub two is going to be x sub one minus f of x sub one over f prime of x sub one. That's going to be eight minus f of eight over f prime of 8. I'm going to work all this out by hand first, and then we'll go back and do it on the calculator for the subsequent uh, versions. Uh, f of 8, if you plug that in, uh, 8 times 8 times 8, 64 times 8 uh, is going to be uh, 512. Sorry, so you have 8 over 1 minus 512. If you put in 8 here, you get 64 times 3 is 192 plus 3 is 195. So that's going to be, let's just do it right here, uh, 8 minus, there we go, uh, 512 divided by 195. So the next guess is 5.374. Let me make this so you can see it. So that's my second guess, x sub 2. So we're going to do this again for 5.374. Let me show you a way you can do this on your calculator and make it faster. 
Uh, so I'm going to, uh, we'll just clear this out for a second. I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to identify f of x as uh, y1. So we'll type that in, x cubed plus 3x plus 1. And then uh, f prime will be y2, uh, 3x squared plus 3. Uh, I'm going to quit. I'm going to go into my window and uh, type in. Um, actually, I'll tell you what. Let's just do it all in, in here. Um, so y3 is going to be my formula. Uh, I'm going to type whatever the last x was. Uh, that's x sub n minus the function at x. That's going to be y1 uh, at x. So you go to vars right here, vars. Go to y vars. Pick function, and then pick y1. So we're going to have y1 of x divided by uh, y. The second, the, the derivative is y2. So that goes on the bottom of that fraction. Um, vars again, y vars function, y2 at x. So this is my uh, this is my my Newton's method formula. The last guess minus the function at x divided by the derivative at x, and those are defined as y1 and y2. So if I quit now, um, since my formula is in y3, I can go to vars, y vars, function, y3, and plug in my 8 again. That was my first guess. So that was 5.246. I think I typed in something wrong. Uh, anyway, so I'm just going to write down 5.246. And then I'm going to hit second, enter. And um, I'm going to put in this the answer. That means that's plugging this into there. And so my third guess, let me write that down, x sub 3 is 3.363. Then we're going to do second, enter again. That answer now refers to that, so that's going to give me my next guess. x sub 4 is 2.0328. Then second... Again, this is going to put in the 2.032 to get me my fifth guess. Uh, x sub 5, 1.026. And you can see the difference is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but it's still pretty remarkable, pretty big. Uh, now I've got point x sub 6, 0.1886. Do this again, again and we get a negative 0.3175. I'll make a new column here. Do it again. Uh, x sub 8, negative 0.322. Get ready for x sub 9. Second enter. Uh, so now I want you to notice something. Uh, let me write that down. Negative 0.322185. This was negative 3.221915. So this is where you have to decide how long you want to do this. We've done nine of them. That's a lot. Um, so from, from the seventh to the eighth, I had negative 0.3 shared. So if you only cared about the first decimal place, as soon as that first decimal place repeats, it's never going to change again. So if you just needed to say, hey, it's negative 0.3, you know, good enough, you're done. Um, if you needed two decimal places, obviously negative 0.31, negative 0.32, the second decimal place has not changed. Or, I'm sorry, it has changed, so that's not good enough yet. But now from the eighth to the ninth, we have negative 0.32, negative 0.32. Once the decimal point repeats, it's never going to change again. So if you wanted, actually, look, 0 0.3221, 0 0.3221, then we have a 9 and an 8. So if four decimal places was good enough for you, you could stop at 9. And as those four decimal places, once they repeat, will never change again. So, you know, it depends on what your degree of, of, of error is allowed to be. And, you know, it depends on your application. If you're doing something that's kind of willy-nilly, I just need a ballpark, you know, this is probably great. If you're doing something that's highly precise and you need really super precision, you may need to keep going. Let's just keep going for another uh, round. Let's get the 10th. Now look at my numbers, 3221853544. So now at the 10th guess, we have um, uh, we have like 
what is that, nine or ten decimals repeating, probably the, that's all the precision you would ever need. Um, so now my first guess was eight. You know, that was probably kind of a, a bad guess. Um, you know, it was really far away. That's why it took me ten iterations or nine iterations to get to a satisfactory zero. Um, you know, if you were to guess better, you'd probably need fewer iterations. But the great thing about Newton's method is that no matter how bad your guess is, you will always land on your zero. Um, let's graph this and just take a look at it and, and think this through. I already typed the function into y1, so I'm simply going to turn off the others for now so I can look at a graph. Uh, we'll go to graph. Uh, does that look like negative 0.3? Uh, possibly. Let's go find for real. Second calc, zero. Left bound. Right bound. And then guess. Uh, sure enough, negative 0.3221, so forth. So that was the correct zero. And you can see there is only one zero. The other two must be imaginary. Uh, if there were multiple zeros, uh, beware of that. If you do Newton's method, it will be attracted to the nearest one. So your guess has to be uh, kind of remotely close to the nearest zero or the one that you want to find. Um, okay, so we did an example, um, and you know maybe uh, I could do this again with a with a closer guess. Let me just do that real quick, and then we'll we'll move on. Uh, once again, we're going to go to vars function. Y3 is where I save that. So my, my actual number is like negative 0.3. So let's guess like 1. So that's my second guess. And then if I just do answer, third guess, fourth guess, second enter, fifth guess, you know, I'm getting to that negative 0.32 a lot faster now. So uh, for now, this is my magic formula. Uh, next, we're going to uh, identify the source of it, how it came to be. So let's uh, draw a picture, just a very general picture. This is going to be called f of x. And this is my zero right here. Uh, and this is my first guess. X sub n. And so if you were to draw a tangent line, um, this is f of x. This is a tangent line. So notice the tangent line. If you draw a tangent line at that point of the curve, the place it crosses is closer to the zero than where you started. So this is going to be x sub n plus 1. So that's the next point. Um, and then you're going to pick that. You're going to draw a tangent line there. And this right here is going to be your next point, x sub n plus 2. And basically, you keep drawing these tangent lines, and it keeps having an intersection point on the x-axis that gets closer and closer to the real zero until you are sufficiently close. So that's kind of how this process works. Um, like I said, you draw your first point on the curve, draw a tangent line that crosses at a point that was closer than where you started, come up to the curve again, draw a new tangent line that crosses at a point that's closer to the zero than where you started, and you do this, you know, two times, three times, nine or ten times, whatever it takes. Let's draw a new picture. This time I'm going to algebraically kind of work through this. Actually, let me get a new page. We need some more space. And I'm using a parabola here, but it really makes no difference at all uh, what kind of uh, function you use. Yeah, I'm getting kind of picky. I want to, I want to draw it a little bit better. So this would be x sub n uh, this would be my line uh, 
um, and this will be x sub n plus 1. <coughs> so the way this, this comes to be is recognizing that with this tangent line, slope is defined in two ways. The slope of this tangent line is defined um, in a calculus sense by its first derivative plugged with x of n plugged in. So I'm going to write this. Uh, the derivative at x sub n equals slope of tangent line. That's a calculus concept. Also, notice I've got two points. If this is function f of x, um, the slope can also be defined in the algebra one uh, in the algebra one uh, sense where you have the difference of two points y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and these two points this is x sub n plus 1 comma 0 we know that because it's an x-intercept and this point right here is x sub n um, well x sub n comma uh, and then this is f of x sub n so also, um, if you do y2 minus y1, it's f of x sub n minus 0 uh, over x sub n minus x sub n plus 1. That is the slope of the tangent line also. So keep in mind here, the, the way we're going to do this, we've got two points. The slope of that tangent line is an Algebra 1 student would just say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. A calculus student would say the derivative at x of n is the, is the slope of that tangent line. And what you can do, you can kind of have the best of both worlds here and just say if those are both slopes, let's set them equal to each other. So f prime of x sub n equals f of x sub n minus 0 over uh, x sub n minus x sub n plus 1. Uh, to get rid of that fraction, I'm just going to multiply both sides by x sub n minus x sub n plus 1. Like that. Uh, so we get uh, x sub n minus x sub n plus 1 times f prime x sub n uh, equals f of x sub n, and we're just doing some algebra now. Uh, I'm going to divide this out. We want an expression for the next term, so ultimately I want to solve for that. That's my goal, because if I have the first term, then I need to get the next term. So we get that. So x sub n minus x sub n plus 1 equals f of x sub n over f prime of x sub n. Uh, next we can take away x sub n from both sides and we get negative x sub n plus 1 equals negative x sub n plus f of x sub n over f prime of x sub n. And then we can divide by negative and we get x sub n plus 1 equals positive x sub n minus f of x sub n over the derivative of x uh, sub n. So that is Newton's method formula. Um, that's Newton's method formula. And like I said, it's an iterative technique. You pick any x that you want. You plug it in here and here and here. And do the algebra. Hopefully you'll use the calculator. Spit out your second guess. Use the second guess. Plug it in here, here, and here. Get the third guess and do this over and over and over um, until the uh, decimals begin to repeat. And like I said, once a decimal repeats, it will never um, change. So if you need two decimals precision, stop when you get two decimals that repeat and, and so forth. Um, so uh, that wraps up Newton's method. Uh, that, thank you very much.